What's going on everybody? Welcome to part four of our robotics with the Raspberry Pi tutorial series. In this part, we're gonna build on our last script. Uh, our last script from tutorial three was the following. It just basically moved our, our robot forward and back. We can run that again real quick. Just a really simple script that just ran it forward and backwards. Now what we're gonna do is create a full kind of user controlled scenario. Now, in order to do what I want to do, we're going to need access to the kind of GUI desktop or what's called X. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do this, but the, the way to do it remotely is either with a VNC or with something like XRDP, which is sort of a VNC, but we can use that with Windows. So Windows isn't really the most VNC friendly operating system, but with the remote desktop, we can do it really simply. So if you're on Windows, what you might be able to do or get away with is to do sudo apt get install xrdmp and run that. Now, I already have that, so nothing's going to happen. If for some reason it says, you know, uh, cannot find this package or something's going wrong, make sure you run a sudo apt get update and also do a sudo apt get upgrade. Uh, and that and then try to run it one more time. Otherwise, uh, you, you might not be finding your packages for a different reason. Now, um, in this tutorial, what we're going to do first is I'll wait for this stuff to kind of go away. Uh, but once you once you add, um, actually, I can probably connect now, but my processor is probably uh, in use. But anyway, uh, if you're on Windows and you've installed XRDP, all you do is go to your start bar and go to remote desktop connection. If you don't if you can't find it, just literally search for remote desktop. We'll click on that and up pops this. And then in here is where you put your local IP address to the Raspberry Pi. Now mine's on uh, 192.168.0.109. So that's where I'm going to connect. So I'll hit connect. It might be pretty slow again because the Pi is doing stuff. But anyway, you'll probably get this little, you know, uh, check thing to see if you really want to connect to that. Yes. And then here you'll log in. You already know your information. Pi Raspberry is probably your password. And then you'll kind of connect. It might take a second again for me because my Raspberry Pi is doing these updates. But um, this will load. And then it basically loads into the desktop version of the Raspberry Pi. So there we have it. Now you might actually have a different background than me. I started with a default Raspbian image and I installed the... Uh, the GoPyGo software, but if you started with the their Dexter Industries GoPyGo uh, image, you probably have a different background. Now, once you get here, um, we're going to go ahead and just set this kind of aside for now, but you need to make sure you can actually achieve this kind of desktop connection. But I'm going to move it over for now. And now what I'm going to do is tutorial three, right click, and I'm just going to duplicate it. You can do whatever you want, but I'm just doing that to make a new file, and we'll call it tutorial4.py. Yes, you'll probably have to enter your password again. I didn't, I guess because I have it saved. Anyway, open up tutorial4, and now you're ready to rumble. Now what we're going to do is, I'll just remove all this, and we're going to need the following. We're going to import tkinter, capital T, as tk, and then from go pi go import all again. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover going forward, backwards, left, right, rotate, stop, grab the distance from the distance sensor, and also move the servo. If you don't have a distance sensor, just don't worry about it. Don't code that part, right? Uh, if you don't have the servo, don't worry about it. Don't code that part. and Everything else will work just fine. So uh, first we're gonna uh, have a little bit of a constant up here. It'll be servo range, and that's gonna equal a list of values two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'll explain that when we get there to the, to the actual code down at the bottom. Now, uh, at the very, very bottom, we're gonna say command equals uh, tk dot tk. Pay attention to the casing there. And then we're going to say command dot bind underscore all. And then in quotes here, key with those brackets and then key underscore input. OK. And then finally, we run command dot main loop. And all this does is it tr this is going to open up a basic tkinter window and then it's going to start tracking all the key presses that we press. And for every key press that happens, 
it's going to run key input with that key event. So key input doesn't exist yet. So we're going to write a, uh, the key input function now. So we're going to define key underscore input. And the uh, event, we'll just call that literally event. Now to find out the key that was pressed, we're going to say key underscore press equals events dot key sim for key symbol dot lower just in case uh, caps comes into play and then we'll do print key press like that so we'll go ahead and save that for now and let me make it small enough to make sure that went over and then what we'll do is let's bring over the remote desktop thing now and let's double click on LX terminal and when that pops up we need to navigate our way into the um, the go pi go local but I'm also gonna make my font larger so everybody can see it really well awesome okay so now ls here CD into desktop go pi go local list out the stuff there's tutorial 4 so I'm gonna go sudo python tutorial 4 dot pi hit enter and hopefully, yep, there's our tkinner window. Now, as long as we're active in this window, we'll click on that and I can press keys, right? W, S, D, A, D, space, uh, U, or no, I hit I, and so on. It's a very simple kind of single key at a time logger. Okay, so we're that far, that was successful. And now what we can do is assign functions when various keys are pressed. So moving this aside, well, we'll keep printing the key press just so we can see it. Um, and let me move this down a little bit. So now that we've got that, what we can start asking is just a bunch of if statements. So we can say if key underscore press equals uh, W, what do we want to do? Well, we want to run FWD. Simple enough. Then we can go uh, L if key underscore press equals S. What do we want to do? Well, if it's an S, we want to go backwards, so BWD. And then we'll keep this going. So I'm, instead of typing elif and equals all the time, I'm just going to paste, 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 paste a few in there. We might not, I don't think we'll use all of those, but it'll save us some time. So we want to handle for W, S, A, D, Q, E, and space. And then the letter U, and we'll leave this one for now empty. Okay, so going back up, W, S, and then A, uh, we want that one not to be backward. A will be left, D will be right, Q will be left rot for left rotate, E will be right rot for right rotate, and then the space key will be to stop, whoops, to stop the bot. And then U will be for the distance sensor. So if you don't have a distance sensor, just get rid of this, right? But if you have one, we'll use U. And the U is just for ultrasonic distance sensor. Um, that's going to be the following. We'll just, we'll just print it out for now. This will just be the distance. So print and then US... Uh, for ultrasonic sensor dist and then you give the pin number if you plugged in the ultrasonic distance sensor by their uh, Instructions the pin you plugged it into is probably 15 So there's that now uh, What we're gonna do is I Think we, we'll just leave everything now. So that should do for all the things that we need. So we'll save that We'll come down uh, back to our GUI, bring that over here. Apparently I am lost on here. I got like off the screen, I guess. There we go. <laughs> Rerun that. And then the uh, tkinter window should pop up. There it is. And then now let's just try forward command. So you should see that the wheels on mine are spinning and yours should be spinning too. Let's try backwards. Sure enough, now it's going backwards. Let's try a rotate. Um, so I'll hit Q. And then now they should be spinning in opposite directions. Let's try E. Now they should spin in the other opposite direction. Now let's try to stop this thing. Space. Cool. 
So now we can actually remote control our, la our, our laptop, remote control our GoPi Go with our keyboard. Now, before we go on to the next tutorial, I do want to show the servo as well. So what I will do, and if you don't have a servo, then you can pretty much just jump to the next tutorial. But if you do have a servo or you want to know how we're going to handle for the servo, here's all we would do. It's pretty quick code. So we're going to say L if key underscore press dot is digit because the key press is coming through as a string. But what you can do to find out if a string is actually a number that's in a string format, you can just ask is digit. And that, it's a boolean, so it comes through as either true or false. So if you've got if the did if the you know the string is five and you say if five dot is digit, even though it's a string, it's going to come back as a true because yes, five is a is a digit. So if the key press is a digit. The next thing that we're going to ask is if int, if the integer value of the key press is in our servo underscore range, we're going to enable the servo because otherwise it's not going to be enabled. And then we're going to go, we're going to say servo. And then we basically want to set the servo and you set it to a value. And this value is going to be the integer value of the key press times 14. This just worked out for my servo. It just seemed like a good number. And basically, this will be to the point where 5 times 14, so 70, is the center point, basically, for the servo. About depends on how well you screw the servo in. Mine was a little crooked, so your number might be a little different. <laughs> but um, you do that, and then 2 to 8 will be kind of a sweeping motion. And again, depending on how well you hooked up your servo and how long your camera, if you have a camera on there, uh, my main issue was that the camera cord basically is not very long. So if you rotate all the way over in one direction, you basically run out of camera cord and you're pulling on that cord. And so I didn't want to do that. But if you don't have a camera, you can actually rotate this thing around quite a bit. Anyway, we set the server to that number, and then we'll go ahead and disable the servo. Now, yours might be a little different, I don't know, but for some reason, it, I just enable the servo, set the servo, and disable it because the servo, like, it'll just keep kind of like wiggling a little bit if you don't disable it. So I disable it to shut it up and stop it from wiggling so much. But I think part of that is because there's a little bit of resistance that is coming from that camera module. So I think that's why it's doing it. So disabling it seems to help a lot, but uh, again, yours might defer from mine. So anyways, we'll save this and I'm actually done there. So I'm gonna move that out of the way and um, <laughs> this logged my, my key. Anyway, uh, we're gonna close this and have to rerun it. So it's running the new version of tutorial four. Okay, so now it's up, we can go forward, stop. And then now you can start pressing your, ser or your buttons for the servo range and you should see that the servo actually moves. Now, we probably should have added a slight time because uh, now like like this is two and then eight. I'm pressing eight, but it takes a few presses to get it over. So actually maybe what we might want to do is give it a slight sleep, maybe uh, time.sleep uh, one. Let's just try that real quick. I'm not sure that it'll uh, I'm, I can't remember if the servo will just keep running or not, but we'll find out in a moment. So that pops up. Let's try two. Yeah, there we go. So eight, five. Now that, yeah, so with that one second, that's enough time for it to actually get to the point where it wants to be. And then you can actually, I can hear it. You probably can't hear it on the mic, but I can hear it kind of wiggling and then it's disabled and shuts up. But anyway, so now you can control the servo position with your keyboard. So that's pretty cool. Um, so anyways, that's that for this tutorial. Now we're able to control our robot, move forward, backward. I pressed way too many keys. It's going crazy. <laughs> forward, backward, rotate. Uh, we never checked the distance, so I hit you. And now you can see the distance is 677 centimeters from the point of fire, which is going basically all the way across my room. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So that's it for the basic control of your GoPi Go. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about controlling the missile launcher on our GoPi Go. So that'll be very exciting. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.